from the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. It's Nick Barris with you on a Monday. A very good show on tap this morning. Uh, I think this is something we've all paid attention. You know, we do gavel to gavel trials here and we cover a lot of legal issues and sentencing for convicts. And more than once, I hear from many folks saying, wait a second, they were sentenced to 25 years, but they're only gonna do one third of that and they'll be out in less than 10. What's the story on that? Uh, what's, you know, and there was a piece of legislation passed, um, not signed by the governor, but passed by the legislature. This session will be taking effect, I assume, starting in July. And it is a truth in sentencing bill, which is for a great many crime convictions, if you're sentenced to six years, you do all that six years, okay? locking people up for what the sentence comes down out of the trial. Now, on its surface, I think we're all saying, look, if that's what the sentence is, he should or she should have to do it. But there's nuance here, and there is a reason why you get points for good behavior, why there is early parole, why sometimes you do only a portion of the sentence that you are given. And now that this has passed, trust me, there may be some big issues coming up down the line that they're going to have to be addressed. And you know what? Tennessee is repeating its history and did not learn from the past. And I can tell you, that's not me saying it, but that's our guest, David Rabin. Obviously, very well-known attorney here in town. I was joking with him as we walk in. David's been so involved with so much, legally speaking, in the state constitutional issues. Good morning. It's good to have you on. Thank and you. And you were in the middle of this once before. You wrote, I thought, uh, just an excellent op-ed in the Tennessean before this ultimately passed, and now we know it's law. What is your thought? All right, the whole idea of truth in sentencing. Our rank and file viewers are saying, look, if someone gets 10 years, why the heck aren't they doing 10 years, David? Well, a little history. Back in colonial days, we didn't have prisons. We had whipping people and putting them in stocks and that sort of thing. And the jurors were not convicting people because of corporal punishment. So they, the religious people got together and said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put them in a large prison where they'll do penance. We'll give them a Bible. And it's from the word penance that we get the term penitentiary. Mm. That's where it comes from. And so we enacted a, a, a sentencing law in Tennessee, the prison law, and put everybody in prison in 19, 1831 for 100% of their time. Okay. And two years later, it wasn't two years before the governor said, wait a minute, we've got to give them some incentive. And so they get put in incentive time. And then later on, they had parole as an incentive for people to do better and they hit on the idea of rehabilitating people because people are going to get out eventually so you can't lock somebody up for five years just say here's a bus ticket and a new suit go out and sin no more they'll go out and commit a new crime yeah. so we want to rehabilitate them so that's been everywhere in the country that's the idea and so this new law says oh the heck with all of that we're just going to have an incapacitation model You'll serve every day that the judge sentences you to for most offenses, uh, burglary, uh, those sorts of things, some property crimes. Um, and crimes are serious. People should be punished. But the bottom line is you get a sentence and it's divided into parts, incarceration part, uh, rehabilitation part, release part, parole part. And so it's a measured thing. It's a carrot and a stick approach. And so that's been the law of everywhere. But this new legislation says no. We're going to lock everybody up for their entire sentence. So, for instance, someone does 10 years for armed robbery. Okay, talk about before this law passed, the thinking of, all right, they do 10 years, but with good behavior, they could get out on probation with 30% served if, if they meet certain guidelines. Why is that a good idea in your mind, to, to have that as an option? Well, it's built, it's sort of baked into the system. When the judge says you'll get so many years, and we have changed the laws now where it's not so equivocal as to what it might be. That was part of the problem that people had. We didn't know exactly when. Well, the current law before this came in, there's sort of a fixed time. They've taken away good time credits and stuff for your parole date. So if you get 30%, you're not eligible a day earlier than 30%. So you come up for parole, the parole board decides based on your prison record whether you should be paroled or not. And for something like armed robbery, they, the parole board makes them serve about half before they seriously consider paroling them. So it's sort of a 50-50 thing. 
And then when they get out on their screen, mm -hmm. they're given a place to live, they're having programs they have to do, and they reintegrate back into society. Uh, people say, well, 40% of the people recidivate, they go back. Well, 60% of them don't. You know, it's like a batting average, the best batter in the world. Mm -hmm. It's 400, that means he misses six out of, out mm -hmm. of 10 times. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you want to rehabilitate people so that they are successful, so that they don't come back. I mean, what do we call it? It's the Department of Correction. We want to correct people. Uh, it's an ideal thing. Uh, and so as long as you have a fixed parole date where it can't be less, people understand that. This new law does away with all that. And we're going to get back into the history and what you were involved with in the, the late 70s. But before we get to that, what, if you can, just crystallize for us your concern. What is going to happen now with the new law that was just passed? What do you foresee happening? And then we'll talk about why, based on history, you have proof to back that up. Okay. What will be inevitable? It's not just Tennessee, but everywhere in the country, California, New York. Whenever they pass a law like this... Uh, within the, uh, the first year, nothing's going to happen because those people will be in prison anyway. But in the second and third and fourth and fifth year, when you hit about five or six years out, the people that should have been released will not be. And you'll just have an expansion, uh, like a balloon, in the prisons. You'll have overcrowding times 10. And you'll either you'll have to build new prisons, which are incredibly expensive. You have to hire guards and that sort of thing. Uh, a lot of people will age out. They'll become geriatric patients. We'll have to give them more health care, that sort of thing, or they're no longer dangerous. Um, and so you'll have a huge prison uh, explosion to where the cost could be well over $200 million. Um, do lawmakers not realize this? They do. Why are they doing it? Because it's not going to have any immediate impact. The people are going to be there anyway. And so does it sound good to say they're hard on crime? It sounds good to say they're hard on crime. It, it, it's a, it, this is an election year. They can say this is they're hard on crime. A lot of people support this when you look at it in a simplistic way. Um, and they say enough. But the, the, the sentences are already astronomical. Uh, which I can get to when you get to the history of this thing. Let's talk then the history. Uh, this is history repeating itself. In fact, the circumstances may be worse now because it's very difficult to hire correctional officers. Prisons are overcrowded as it is to begin with. In 1979, um, you were called in uh, Governor Lamar Alexander um, and lawmakers looking at this very same type of thing. It was. And Lamar Alexander and others were saying, look, enough is enough. Exactly the same verbiage we have today. Bill Koch, who is now the dean of Nashville School of Law, he's former Supreme Court Justice. I was in the Attorney General's office. I had drafted Tennessee's death penalty. I mean, that's how conservative I am and was. And said, you guys are going to draft a law. And we came up with a law that's almost exactly like this. Fixed parole, no credits, that sort of thing. It was called the Class X Felony Law of 1979. We even had stickers put up with a little, with a little guy with a gun on it and an X on top of him. And we put it in all the 7-Elevens so on the market so people say Class X protects. It was great. We closed the work release centers, hard on crime. It was wonderful. It was a prosecutor's dream. I was a prosecutor. Within three years, the prisons started bulging. And then finally, with six years later, we had riots all over the state. We had four prisons in a riot status at one time. Why? Because <laughs> it was so crowded. They, they did not build prisons. It takes, you know, to, when you're dealing with prisons, it's like uh, building an airplane while you're flying in one to Atlanta, for example. It, it is very expensive. You have to have a lot of security, that sort of thing. Uh, at expense, you have to buy the land and hire the people and train them. So it's not something you can do overnight. We didn't spend the money. It's easy to vote for a bill and maybe appropriate money, but you have to have prisons. We didn't have any prisons to put them in and didn't foresee this. Didn't have the statistical analysis like we do today. And they had huge overcrowding. We were two to three times overcrowded. There were riots in four prisons. The Turney Center, uh, 20 miles from here, $11 million of damages. Nurses, doctors, and guards were held hostage by the prisoners because they were protesting, saying, we're stuffed in here like, you know, seven, eight to a cell. 
uh, and the National Guard had to come in, the police had to come in, and finally, and for, one of them was a smoking ruin. The governor called the legislature into emergency session. They immediately did, restored the parole, the credits, started building new prisons. Federal judge took over our prison system. That's how bad it was. And so the governor said, we're going to have a new law. We came up with a new sentencing law on the Sentencing Commission, of which I was a member. The lieutenant governor appointed me, and we came up with a whole new system with a grid, enhancements for people with long prior records, mm -hmm. which, you, which is, makes sense. And it was a rational system. Uh, and we had the parole as part of it in the discretion of the parole board. And so little by little, we dug our way out of that. But it was a long and arduous process. There was, that was, when people say truth in sentencing, that is the truth in sentencing, what I just told you. What we're doing today is exactly what we did in 1979. That's what the Governor Lee said. I'm not signing this because we've been there before. And we're going to have exactly the same crunch in about four or five years. Um, well, unless we're going to spend millions and millions and millions of more do dollars to, to dot our landscape with more prisons. Got to take a break on that note. Um, yeah, when we come back, I want to talk more about that. Maybe you can also talk to our viewers about, and so many of them are going to say, I want truth in sentencing. If I hear 10 years, I want 10 years, and maybe you can explain the process. Public safety is what's most important. You're not of talking course. about releasing killers. And then also the fact that Tennessee seems to be going in the opposite direction of the trend of the rest of the country when it comes to dealing with inmates. Look, I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of paying a ton of money out of my taxpayer dollars to lock up a bunch of folks. You know, I want to find a better way. We'll take a break, be back with more of our conversation with David Raven right after this.